Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this evening's edition of Hasten to Goodness. You guys, please don't forget to support us on social media, 3 wsfacebookcom slash TV, as well as Hasten to Goodness. Of course, as usual, uh, as every night this Ramadan, we, I am joined by Sheikh Kareem Abu Zayd. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Kareem. Wa alaikum assalam Malik. Sheikh, you know, I thought about in this month of Ramadan, there's no perhaps better time, or perhaps we can just take this op as opportunity, or perhaps we should do this the whole year, is talk about the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And one, and one aspect about his biography is, mm -hmm. He was indeed an orphan. Yeah. And I thought about this, and uh, this is a very touching part of his biography uh, that we can perhaps speak about, and perhaps we can speak about what me and you and the viewers can do uh, to help orphans, uh, the collective effect that that has, uh, how it softens the heart to remember them, and uh, what, what, uh, what status they have in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, uh, Malik, the, uh, what he started the show with is every time that you see an orphan, you remember that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was one. Yes. And uh, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa taala reminded the messenger with in a beautiful chapter called the Duha, the, the mid uh, morning, uh, he said, "Wajadaka alam yajidika yatiman faawa." Indeed, I have found you, or uh, you know, you, you were, uh, you know, uh, I just an orphan. Right. And I give you shelter. I, I'll give you shelter. Yeah. You know, I I give you a place, right? A lodging Sust place, sustenance, food, shelter. S b basically, he was sheltered by his grandfather and sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then later on by his uh, uncle Abu Talib. Uh, so, uh, also, if you look into the Quran, you find out that it's a major sin to uh, deal in the wealth of the orphans in, uh, in an unjust way. In an unjust way. Take their money without right, in other words. Uh, because they are weak uh, in, the, in, the, in the society. They, are, they, they, they don't have the power to stop you. Right. Be careful now. You know, uh, uh, indeed, the verse says, mm. Indeed, those who devour the wealth of the uh, orphans unjustly, إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارًا Indeed, they are devouring uh, fire in their bellies. Uh, not only this, uh, this is in the world. And sure. in the day of resurrection, they will uh, be placed in that blazing fire. So, um, we're not supposed to, to harm them. Uh, rather, we were supposed to uh, take care of them. And uh, like you mentioned, uh, actually a companion came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, complaining about how hard his heart is. He said, go and wipe the head of, a, of an orphan. SubhanAllah. Uh, imagine this. And I, I, I really, uh, I mean, we all love the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and we want to be with him in Jannah. You know, we, we, can you imagine he can actually be with the messenger of Allah in Jannah? And he made that beautiful hadith, you know, like this. Ana وَكَافِلِ الْيَتِيمِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ كَهَاتَيْنِ Me and the one who takes care of an orphan uh, will be like those in Jannah. Like putting his fingers together. Yes, like imagine yeah, your neighbor so in Jannah is so Rasulullah so Allah 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 and the way to get this is to take care of an orphan. Sure. Um, I think Malik, we do have a, a, a great uh, uh, deal of, of, uh, of, of explanation to do because a lot of our viewers are in the West, and uh, what the how they do it in the West, they do have something called adoption. Great topic, Sheikh. And uh, we certainly need to uh, point out the alternative for that, because adoption, the way that is adopted uh, in the West, is not, is right. not an Islamic okay. uh, concept uh, or practice. Uh, it, it should not be implemented like this. Okay. But there is a way to take care of. Okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about that because that's uh, also a beneficial topic sure, as well. Sure, inshallah. Inshallah. You guys stay tuned for more. Hasten to goodness, we will be right back, inshallah, after this short break. <laughs> Welcome back to Hasten to Goodness. We're speaking about orphans and the role they play in the Muslim society and in the hearts of every Muslim, Sheikh Kareem Abu Zayd, thank you for, for introducing this wonderful topic. Yes. Sir. Sheikh, perhaps we, before we get into the details, and you mentioned adoption, perhaps we can briefly just mention how it softens the heart. I know one man who visited some orphans, and he told me that 
when the, he went to the place where the, the Daria team, the orphan house, uh, that he went to teach them English and just some, you know, for the sake of Allah, that when their kids were jumping on him playing, it just brought tears to his heart because they're so lovely. There's children and they're missing their parents and they loved mm -hmm. him so much. And he couldn't go back because of the, the emotional attachment to these children. So perhaps we can just, just talk about the, this, how the effect that they, have on our, that they should have in our hearts and the place that they should have in our hearts. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whosoever does not show mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not show him mercy. Uh, imagine, uh, you know, uh, how they define an orphan. Uh, someone who lost uh, the father when they are under the age of 18 or so, 17, 18. Imagine losing uh, a father. Um, this person uh, needs, uh, you know, uh, mercy, uh, needs compassion. Right. SubhanAllah. Needs love. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is the rule uh, of the society, of the community, to fulfill that need for that little child. Um, you mentioned the brother uh, who did visit uh, an orphan and, and he couldn't control himself. I, I happened actually to go and visit an orphan, um, uh, which uh, I believe will be shown uh, in the episode later on today. And imagine I asked actually about these kids and they said, actually these kids lost both. SubhanAllah. Uh, their fathers and mothers. So imagine being parentless. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, I actually uh, found out this after we recorded in, in my way out. It, it kind of touched me personally. Right, right. You know, and yeah. that, you know, imagine, and there were a lot of kids in, in, in that place. And, and, you know, I kept making dua for these brothers and sisters. Uh, who actually uh, in support of that institution, I think we went to a building uh, which is designated to uh, taking care of, uh, of kids who lost both mm -hmm. uh, uh, fathers and mothers. And, and even the sisters who are working in, 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 in that uh, facility, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and, and, and reward them. So um, uh, this is the way uh, Islam uh, teaches us. And Subhanallah, our messenger experienced that. Subhanallah. Uh, that is why he stressed the importance of taking care of an orphan uh, to the extent that you will be his neighbor in Jannah uh, if you actually take care of an orphan, just one orphan. Uh, you provide provision and, and, and you, you, you lodging and, and, and you take care of their psychological also uh, needs. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant you that favor of being with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in paradise. And Sheikh, this is also a wonderful reminder for parents and children. So now as a parent, I re it reminds me of the blessing I have with my children. Sure. And it also reminds me of the responsibilities I have to my parents right. and, the great and why I should be grateful for being in this uh, particular situation. Sheikh, you mentioned in the introduction uh, many positive hadith regarding orphans and taking care of them. Perhaps you can mention now uh, the hadith stating of the punishment of the people who treat them unkindly and unjustly. And also perhaps we can mention the negative effects that uh, not taking care of orphans will have on the society mm. as a collective whole. Well, look at it this way. You know, um, you got children who do not have somebody to take care of them, uh, supervise their upbringing and make sure it's uh, a sound one. Uh, and they are out there left uh, in the streets, uh, guess what? Uh, they can be destructive uh, uh, means to the community uh, when they actually uh, mature and grow up uh, because they can fall into the wrong hands of... of uh, oh, certainly, an, under an the wrong influences. An amazing here, Malik, in, in, in a country like, uh, for example, uh, in a country like e you know, in, uh, Egypt, you, you find a lot of orphans being uh, abused. Um, one scenario here that uh, people would use them for begging and they would actually right. 
share their harvest. Like right, they, right. They send them to big and ask people for money. Uh, for money, and then they go and divide uh, the money. Yeah. The money with them. It's, it's like a business. Right. Um, for, uh, imagine instead of uh, turning them into uh, productive means uh, to help the community. Right. Uh, you neglecting them uh, may end actually. Uh, you may end up looking for means to protect yourselves right. from their harm. So that is why Islam stressed uh, the importance of taking care of the orphans. orphans. Yes. Sheikh, uh, a good brother once brought a wonderful point to me. Uh, he said, unfortunately, we see in many countries the rise of women giving birth to babies out of wedlock. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, very common in many countries in the United States, Canada, and Europe. I don't know the numbers, but it, uh, indeed it's very high. And some, this brother said to me, you know what, this child, according to our understanding as Muslims, is an orphan, essentially, because he's been raised without a father. Is that a, a, a fair analysis here? Or, or the orphan would mean that his father has passed away? No, not necessarily. Uh, uh, his father is not identified. So actually right. the definition would, Subhanallah. or he went somewhere and he never returned and okay. there is no way to trace him. Right, okay. So for an extended period of time, of course. Right. But certainly uh, uh, a child who is not, um, his father is not identified, he is an orphan. Right, okay. Uh, you know, sure. Uh, I'm sure they, they can uh, do uh, these tests and find out who is. Right. Uh, uh, the father in, 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 in this case, but certainly uh, the scenario uh, would establish that this person is an orphan, but this child is an orphan. In the United States, the, the, to just I don't want to get sidetracked, but this issue, before we take a look at the report, the father's not written on the birth certificate, on the name. Right, right, that's another issue. This is a huge issue, Sheikh, yes, isn't it? Yes. So indeed the child is an orphan with the, with the father that's still alive. May Allah yeah. help us and guide us and, and all yeah, to Islam. I think we need to bring Islam there and, and, and talk Allah. about it, inshallah. Sheikh, we're going to take a look at this report. I wasn't with you when you filmed it. Can you give the viewers a little bit? What did you do exactly? And where did well, you guys go? We, uh, I think we went and we, I had the luxury of actually sitting with these uh, young uh, girls uh, on, on uh, you know, in a nice bed there. And uh, the brothers were video uh, taping my uh, interaction with them. and. I wanted to teach them some stuff, but I want to tell you, Malik, that day, uh, after learning uh, in my way out, that these uh, uh, girls uh, actually do not have parents at all, it kind of, you know, moved me. You know, right. I, I thought that, you know, they do have mothers, and actually, they don't have mothers either. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, they're orphaned twice. Twi well, in the I sense, I mean, in the sense, right. Yeah, and, and it's really, I mean, these young, beautiful girls, you know, who were put in that, uh, in, in, in that type of circumstance, um, you know, and, and the responsibility of the uh, Muslims, uh, the, the community, the society to compensate them, to, uh, to fulfill their needs, uh, especially the, the love. The That's the point I was going to ask you, Sheikh. You know, that, that, that your, your father is playing with you, your right. mother is playing with you. Right. You can't replace that, you know. Th that was the point I wanted to mention to you. Look, the financial aspect perhaps can be taken care of. Yeah. But the idea of jumping and playing, love. this is the issue that can't be Showing bought. them love, that right. you're interested in them, that I think that's what's uh, really needed. Uh, Certainly. Most. Sheikh, we talk about prayer and fasting and all these acts of worship, but can we say visiting the orphans? And even if you didn't give money, just playing with them. And this is an act of worship? Absolutely. And, and actually the purpose of this report and the purpose of this episode today to encourage a lot of the Muslims, uh, not only to support financially orphans, not only to provide for them, but to actually go and visit uh, and, and interact with them for a while. And you will see how much uh, your heart will be softened after that visit. And of course, the reward is with Allah, and it is an act of worship. Okay, thank you, Sheikh Kareem, for that uh, introduction to the report. Uh, you guys stay tuned to Hasten to Goodness. We're gonna look at this report uh, shot with Sheikh Kareem Ambuzaid on site as he's visiting a, a local orphan uh, community and uh, take a look at it, you know, and uh, stay tuned for more Hasten to Goodness.
orphans, people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for them to be without fathers, and in some cases, mothers. Our messenger, our example, was one of those, sallallahu alayhi wa His father passed away when he's still in the womb of his mother. And his mother also passed away when he was six years old. He knew exactly how an orphan, how an orphan experiences the loss of the parents. And that is why he made that beautiful, beautiful statement. Ana wa kafil al yatim fil jannah kahatain. Me and the one who takes care of an orphan, like these beautiful girls next to me, will be like those in Jannah. Imagine, the orphans is a means to have Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as your neighbor, where? In Jannah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Hadith Abi Darda that a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complaining about how his heart is not soft anymore. He's suffering from a hard heart who doesn't feel the Quran. A heart which doesn't feel the Quran, which doesn't feel the revelation the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded him to go and wipe on the head of an orphan. Imagine wiping with your hand while being merciful on the head of an orphan can soften your hearts. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that the likeness of a Muslim community, a community of believers, once it comes to taking care of one another, is like one body. One body. When there is a limb aching, the rest of the body feels the pain. Imagine brothers and sisters in Islam, if we do not take care as a Muslim community of the orphans, what will happen? They will grow up angry with the society, with the community. You have not taken care of us. You have not brought us up. And they will grow up to be harmful objects, to be devious. And guess what? They will inflict harm upon those who think that they are secure from them. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I know a lot of you live in the West. And we have something there called adoption, tabanni. Islam does not condone that. That you take a child and you strip him out of his lineage, out of his father and mother. We cannot do that as Muslims. The children is to be named after his parents, after his father. His lineage must be maintained because it is one of the holistic aims of our sharia, ah, the preservation of the lineage. Brothers and sisters in Islam, but Islam offered the solution that you take care of an orphan, that you provide for an orphan, not just money, rather love, mercy, care. You take care of them. You make sure that they are nourished, they are brought up like any other children. If you want to be the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest level, al rafiq al-a'la, the highest companion in Jannah, take care of these orphans. Take care of them, provide for them. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften your hearts, wipe 
wipe over the head of these orphans. Take care of them. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you ihsan, excellence in rewarding you, show ihsan, show excellence, show mercy to these orphans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ What is the reward for ihsan? Accept ihsan. If you want a community, a society, filled with harmony, love, free from envy and hate, take care of these orphans. Brothers and sisters in Islam, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your health, wealth, children, take care of these orphans. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ الْيَتَامَ ظُلْمَا إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارًا وَسَيَصْلَوْنَ سَعِيرًا those who devour the wealth of the orphans in an unlawful way, indeed they are devouring fire in their bellies. And in the day of resurrection, they will be punished in a blazing fire. We invite all people to come and visit such places for orphans to see the situation on spot and know how those kids suffer from lacking the core of happiness which is represented by losing their parents. If you want to soften your heart and know what mercy is, come and visit orphans, wipe over their heads and help them and get great reward from Allah the Almighty. This is an invitation to all of us to hasten to goodness by taking care of these orphans. If you really want to feel and know what I'm talking about, maybe one day you should pay a visit to one of these centers where they take care of these orphans. You will be touched. You will feel what I'm talking about. Back to hasten to goodness. I hope you uh, took benefit and took a look at that report. Sheikh Rima Buzaid, I think the report basically said it all. I don't know what mo much more you can say about this topic. It was very touching. If you would like to offer your thoughts uh, briefly about the report. Or, uh, I, I, think it, I think it's, uh, you know, when you breach, when you speak without, when you're out there, you're sensing it. You're actually living. Right the moment yeah you could uh, tell there <laughs> yeah yeah you you you're even understanding of the issues uh, elevated elevated uh, right that imagine these girls they did not have uh, you know or they do not have somebody to take care of them um, as parents and and you were given that opportunity for half an hour to be with them subhanallah and you wanting to make a difference can you make a difference in right. their lives can you bring joy into their lives it's right i think it's one thing as you mentioned to read a hadith and that's great but once yeah. you act activate yeah. the hadith it's and, and yeah. you go see them it's a whole different level that's that's the, the different i think that's what the report is all did about is is, yeah. is all about is I knowledge think, to yeah. action knowledge to action it's true sheikh you did mention one point that you didn't perhaps you can explain more which was interesting that is the issue of adoption. This issue of adoption, it's a, it's a long issue. Perhaps you don't have that, we don't have time to talk about it. But what is wrong with adoption as it's practiced in the country where we live, the United States of America? You see, the, one of the holistic aims of Islam, the, the laws in Islam, the Sharia in Islam, is the protection of the progeny. Okay, right. 
You see, when we say the progeny, uh, a lot of the viewers may not understand what is that. Word. Yeah, understand yeah. It's the next generation. Right. Your lineage. Or the next generation, okay. Well, there are a lot of things actually that can be addressed here. The children are entitled to be born to a father and a mother, married, Subhan. in wedlock, not Allah. dating, Subhan. not. It's actually the right of Allah. the next generation. Uh, why Allah. A, Allah. a lot of Muslims do not pay attention? Why Islam shuns and speak uh, so bad about adultery? That's a great point, Jay. And this is not something that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came up with. It's actually mosaic uh, law. I mean, it's in the Torah. Yeah. It's in the New Testament and the Old Testament that, you know, uh, a woman having a relationship with a man out of wedlock is called adultery and is a punishable... By death. Um, I mean, read the story of Mary Magdalene with, with Jesus when they... Yes, it's, it's in the New Testament. Yes, it's great. Great. Thank when, you for sharing when, that. When, when they wanted to stone her. Yes. And for what a, they accused Maryam of adultery because uh, she Jesus was born as a miracle. Jesus was born without a father. And that's why he spoke. <laughs> that's <laughs> why he spoke Allah in the cradle. Yeah. I mean, Islam did not. Because it, has been already, it has been already established from the get-go that the protection of the progeny, the next generation, because adultery is a threat uh, to... Society. Uh, to society. Um, that is why women are asked to wear their hijab. It, it, goes, in goes, in order. it goes in order. <laughs> and that's why there is a, a certain manner uh, interaction must uh, happen. Uh, lower your gaze, right. do There's not mix, free mixing. Limitations. A man and woman should not be by themselves alone. And, and a lot of limitation. Just why? Because of the right of the uh, so the Allah. next generation right. is not to come out of, uh, of wedlock in a way. Now, uh, another uh, way, another right of the progeny or the next generation is they do have identified parents. Of course. Subhan lineage. Subhanallah. We take this for granted. Oh, this is a My big goodness. no. Yeah. This is a big no in Islam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually and a lot of, uh, you know, that goes to a lot of sisters uh, in the United States who take uh, on the names of their husbands. This is, this is right? actually a big, they shouldn't be doing that. You know, by the way, feminists in America are very impressed with this no, part of Islam. No. They see the woman keeps her name, and yeah. they're very shocked by that. Yeah, yeah. They, you're not supposed, you see, whosoever attribute himself, uh, lineage-wise, yeah, to other than his, his father or his parents, uh, he will not smell the uh, scent of paradise. It's actually a major sin in Islam. So now you taking a child and you naming that child after you. Let's say my name is Abu Zaid. That child is not Abu Zaid. Even if you love him so much, he's not. No, he is not. Right, he never can be. Now I take him into my house and I give him my name and he begins calling me Baba, uh, uh, Baba uh, Daddy. And then later on he is mixing with my wife when he grows up and becomes uh, adult, uh, an adult. Uh, he mixes with, with, with my wife in the house, with my uh, actually uh, born uh, uh, girls, uh, right. daughters. That's something that is not condoned in Islam. So uh, uh, that formula of adoption is not something that uh, Islam condones because it messes up the lineage. This is number one. Number two, it leads to uh, the risk of, uh, uh, of, of adultery. Right. That, uh, you know, that this, this stranger is right. in not from the mahram. In, is not a mahram yeah. to my wife. Is yeah. not a mahram yeah. to my daughter. Yeah. Thank you, Sheikh. Uh, we do have a phone call. Sure. I also want to mention the confusion that could cause with adoption in, in different names. Uh, we'll maybe talk about that after the phone call. We have Brother Abdullah from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Abdullah. Thank well, you for I calling. America. How are you doing? Well, Allah, you are doing great by the grace of Allah. Thank you, brother. Go ahead with your question. Congratulations from uh, Karim. Uh, I thank you uh, for all your overtures and may Allah reward you and all the team on, uh, on Huda TV for their overtures. But uh, can I ask the Sheikh a question? Go ahead, brother. Okay, Sheikh, uh, if there is anyone, uh, there are people, uh, there are uh, our divorced. And uh, their uh, father uh, has left them like uh, five years ago. Uh, and no one knows anything about him. Uh, can yeah. I deal uh, them like uh, orphans or not? Thank you, brother. Yeah. Uh, brother. Actually, I'm sorry, but that's Brother Hossam 
from Egypt by Apollo. Thank you, Brother Hussam, for the call. Khair, Brother Hussam, for your uh, kind words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Um, we, uh, they define orphan. An orphan is someone who has his father or she has her father passed away. They are under the age of 18. That's the, the, the after that, there is no such a thing. Because, because you're adults. The, you're an adult. Okay. You can uh, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Or his father is not identified. Okay, this is a point. This is a good point. Or his father disappeared and no trace. We don't know. And this is more common than you think. Yes. Subhanallah. Yes. May yes. Allah prevent. So actually the fact that the destiny of uh, a hideaway or, or uh, someone who disappeared, um, right. uh, the destiny is not known. Right. Uh, he mentioned five years. This is an extended duration of time. Right. Certainly that uh, person uh, could be uh, uh, called an orphan. But of course, if the father returns, then the title right. is, is, is away, adjusted. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, Sheikh. One point I want to go back to perhaps about adoption, about changing the name of the child. So, uh, somebody, uh, somebody named, um, say I'm, I'm Jack Smith. I adopt this child from a foreign country. Many mission. Go ahead. I want to I wanna share with you a story Go ahead. that really will clear this for you. Okay. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given uh, as a gift Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu an. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, by Khadija, if I'm not mistaken. As, uh, a, as a helper. As, as a helper. Uh, he was, Zayd used to be the son of one of the uh, um, people in, oh, in the Arabia. Okay, okay. No, in the Arabia. And um, his tribe uh, was attacked and he was taken as a little boy yes. uh, as a slave yes. and then sold in the market in, in, in Mecca, uh, purchased by somebody. Later on, uh, came to Khadija. Khadija, uh, radiallahu anha, given him to Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi wa sallam. Okay, gotcha. He lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for years. He loved him dearly. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also loved him so much that he actually given him al-hib, the beloved one to me. Now, the news reached the family of Zayd that Zayd actually is in Mecca. Allah, Allah. They found their son. They were very happy. They found their son. Right. Who is in Mecca. You know, somebody told them, you know, your son, you had a so boy, man. his name is Zayd. He's in Mecca now. So he came with his family members. Uh, looking for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to pay him uh, whatever he uh, requires to, take the boy uh, to release uh, Zayd so he can go back home with them. He, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, I have a better choice for you. I have a better option for you. Ask Zayd if you want to stay with me, uh, he can stay with me. If you want to leave, I do not need any money from you. Subhanallah. Just you know, him. let him go. So Zayd radiallahu an was given uh, the option between staying with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his maternal father, his actual father. He chose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, no, I want to stay with the Messenger. By Allah, I have lived with this man for years. I, I just love him. Yeah. I, I can't, you know, uh, leave him. Uh, leave him. Look, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes. as a reward, he said, because of this, your name now is not Zayd ibn Haritha, your name is Zayd ibn Muhammad. Huh. Your name is Zayd ibn Muhammad. Allah said, no. Ud'uuhum li abaihim huwa aqsatu inda Allah. And a lot of the people, by the way, a lot of Muslims, they get so much confused regarding the fact that the Prophet married the divorced wife of Zayd. Why? Because the Arabs in Jahiliya, they had that issue of adoption. And if your adopted son marries a woman, he cannot marry her. Marries a woman and he divorces her, he cannot marry her. Because you're like a father to right, him. Right, right. Then Zayd married Zainab bin Tajahsh radiallahu anha. Imagine this. And the relationship did not work out. He divorced her. Allah commanded the Prophet to marry Zainab. In order what? In order to break that. that break that habit. That jahiliya. This right. is jahiliya. Right, right. Zaid is not your son. Right. Zaid is somebody that you take care of. Right. But he is not your son. SubhanAllah. And Allah revealed uh, the Quran. مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِهِ وَمَا جَعَلَ أَزْوَاجَكُمُ اللَّاتِي تُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْهُنَّ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ أَدْعِيَاءَكُمْ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ 
he's not your son. He is somebody that you take right. care of. So uh, imagine this issue was, um, um, what, what is the word, encrypted right. in the system, in the society, right. to the extent that the messenger of Allah has to be used to remove it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, normally, Malik, when uh, there is an issue that is so deep right. in the system, and the society, right. Allah would use the messenger. I'm going to use you to, 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 to make you an example of, of, of the, to, yeah. to remove this, to, to, yeah. to, to kill this, uh, this habit. So you uh, uh, calling somebody after you when he is not your actual son is not something that you should do. But we do have the alternative. Which is? Uh, uh, you know, you, you the orphan take uh, uh, kindness to orphan, taking care of orphans. Right. That if the boy is little, he can stay with your family if he's still a little boy. But when he reaches the age of puberty, age of puberty then you have to uh, separate him from the rest of the family. Uh, if he lives in a, 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 a house of, of, of orphans, you know, uh, orphans facility where mm -hmm. uh, orphans are living together, provide you know and and, and so forth okay uh, but uh, certainly uh, the way that the non-muslims do it is something that is not condoned uh, by uh, islam and and i want to tell you something malik that uh, you know um, especially the brothers who live in the west they find it very trying sometimes because this is the way to take care of kids there of orphans there like if you go to the orphans, the, the only way, the only system that you have to name him after you, you're going to call him. You yeah, know, you have to. Uh, you have to do this. Yeah. And, and this is, a not, you know, that's where we need to, uh, to dig deep into the system in the United right. States and let them know that this is something that is right. not condoned right. by right. Islam. And you go through the proper channels, of course, to do that. Right. See, there's one issue here that I was hoping we could address is the issue of confusion. I, I know people, I grew up in the States and in high school. I met kids, you know, my friends and stuff that were adopted. Then when they, so they go, they grew up thinking that the people they grew up with are their mom and dad. Then when they get to be like 16 or 17, they sit them down one day and say, you know what? I'm not your mom. This is not your dad. We adopted you from, from whatever, China or Africa or wherever they took them from. And we love you. We care about you. We have to tell you now you, we're not your real parents. Then that person, it's like you just hit them over the head. Yes, yes. It, you it's see hurtful. That's, it's yeah, hurtful. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's confusion, thing. right? It's confusion. It's the wrong way to go about it. Right, right. You let them know, listen, your parents are dead. Your parents are no longer, uh, uh, no longer on earth. identified. Or, or they are there, but we uh, don't know where they are. Right. And I'm taking care of you, and I will do my best to, right. uh, to love you, to take care of you. Uh, but you're not my son. You're right. not. Yeah. I mean, this is because mm -hmm. this has to do with the protection of the progeny, of the lineage. Right. Sure. Imagine this child cannot marry you. Uh, you know, if, if he's your son, he cannot marry your daughter. Right. Meanwhile, he can marry your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You end up having that child living with your daughters. Yeah. Uh, if you have daughters in the same house. Right. He shouldn't be there. Yeah. 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 That, yeah that makes a, a lot of sense, Sheikh. During the early times, during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and they were fighting battles and many men died. <laughs> So what was the practice of the Sahaba when it came to, 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 I'm sure there was many orphans also at that time. Uh, like Pre-Islam adoption, the way that they do it, is, is there. That uh, basically a lot of these kids or a lot of these children are sold as slaves in the market. And later on, um, you know, purchased. Right. Um, Islam, of course, works uh, towards freeing people from slavery in right. so many uh, aspects. Okay, uh, like yes expiation for so many uh, wrong things which we end up uh, committing you find out the expiation for that is freeing a slave for example freeing a neck freeing somebody from slavery and so forth one of the outlets of, of zakah is people who are seeking uh, freedom from slavery uh, paying for uh, those yes. who are enslaved and they are paying people uh, to those, freedom. Uh, the, their masters off to free them right so but uh, at the end of the day you can take care as a muslim you can take care of someone in your house provided that you set the house in a way right if he or she uh, are at the age of puberty or, or at, uh, you know or approaching it yeah, that yeah. you set the house in a way that you're going to live with me i'm going to take care of you but this is not your sisters these yeah. are not your brothers right right certainly i'm not your father this is not your mother right uh, we need to be straightforward where they are they are somewhere out there and, and that's yeah. the way it is i'm taking care of you and i'll, I'll do my best to take care in of the, you in the long run everyone will appreciate it uh, absolutely uh, sheikh uh, in ramadan here during the maghrib time the, shay, the, the imam oftentimes recites a small surah of the Quran because people, it's Maghrib and, you know, it's Ramadan. Uh, 
Sometimes so Surat Ma'un comes up mm -hmm. and perhaps you can give, we only have about six minutes left. Perhaps you can give us maybe the tafsir of this because it, I think in this ayah it relates uh, somebody who is a hypocrite or dishonest person and he doesn't feed the orphans. Uh, right. It has some sort of relation. Can you talk about that, Sheikh, and why, it's, why well, Allah uses this to explain the other? Uh, you see, let's take the positive side, uh, Surah Al-Insan. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا those who offer food in, in describing the people of Jannah, those who, those who offer food uh, for, uh, to the masakin, to the yatim, the, the orphan, and, and the imprisoned uh, people. Uh, you know, uh, the reward of this is, is, is Jannah, certainly. Uh, in that chapter, Surah Al-Ma'un, Can't you see the one who is belying the religion? فَذَٰلِكَ الَّذِي يَدْعُعُ الْيَتِيمِ Indeed, this is the one who is harsh, doesn't take care of the orphans. So it's a sign. You see that, that the transformation here from uh, uh, the fact belying the religion. Uh, yeah, the connection. The there. connection, because the religion, uh, you know, is inviting you to take care of the society, of the community. The moment that you break that bond between you and Allah, that bond will be broken also between you and your family members and the people who need your support. Right. And top of the list is uh, those who are orf uh, those who are orphans. <laughs> also in Surah Al-Fajr, the same exact uh, uh, analogy. Uh, analogy. Connection. ولا فأما الإنسان إذا ما ابتلاه ربه فأكرمه ونعمه فيقول ربي أكرما وأما إذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي أهانا كلا بل لا تكرمون اليتيم that you do not honor the orphans you do not take care of of the orphans ف it's it's you cannot imagine if you if you scan through the Quran and the Sunnah, the amount of text which stresses uh, uh, the fact that you should take care of the orphans. You should take care of their psychological needs, uh, financial needs. Uh, some orphans, by the way, were left w w w with wealth. With wealth. Yeah. Actually, they are wealthy. Right. Uh, uh, warning, severe warning. Uh, you know, to, to the extent that, uh, you know, when, when a little child father would pass away uh, during the time of our righteous predecessors uh, and people come offering condolences, the orphan taker of that person refuses to use the food from the wealth of the orphan because he's afraid that he's messing up right. with his own wealth. And he would actually satisfy uh, you know, uh, the, the hospitality aspects of people coming, offering condolences from his own wealth, in a way. Fa, uh, uh, a lot of uh, recite Surah Al-Nisa, Surah al al they ask you, oh yes. Muhammad, about the orphans. Qul islahu lahum khayr. Take care of them. You know, that's the best thing that you can do, that you fix, uh, you take care, you, you, you straighten out their affairs. Wa in tukhalituhum fa ikhwanukum. And if you mix up with them, treat them like your brothers and, and so forth. Uh, right. It's important, you see, because if you do not do this, uh, these, like we mentioned in the report, these young ones will grow up uh, to be angry and upset with the society because they were not given uh, the rights by the, the community at large. And then they would come, uh, they, they would become uh, Perhaps into gangs, criminals, or at least lost, lost into drugs. Lost drugs. They will become destructive means uh, in, in, in the society. But imagine when you bring them up uh, in, right, in, in right. that manner, they will benefit the ummah at large. Inshallah. And, and Sheikh, uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Uh, but you know, in Ramadan, we're fasting, we're praying. This takes some effort, to say the least, uh, according to people's capacity. But um, this type of worship, it's physically easy. And it can be done any time throughout the year. And so in, and it's a great way to soften the heart. You talked about reaching higher levels and reaching... Right, this. right. I mean, this is a way to shoot I, you I up. Don't know, I don't know what's wrong uh, with you planning one day out of the year. Uh, I'm sorry, one day out of the month or, or, or every three months. You know what? I'm going to buy some gifts. Yeah. And I'm 
if I cannot afford it, I'm, I'm just going to show love and compassion to the, and I'm going to go to an orphan and, and yeah. visit that place. Yeah. Uh, brothers who are well off, mashallah, uh, build orphan uh, facility for orphans. Right. If you can't build it, just uh, contribute to the construction of one. If you can, yeah. just contribute to the Allah operation Allah. of one. Allah. Uh, so, so many things that you can yeah. do. And uh, like we said, Ramadan is the month of Ihsan. And certainly uh, that would be a good thing that you can do in Ramadan, just go and, and, and visit uh, one of these facilities and, 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 and soften your hearts. Thank you so much for your time, Sheikh Yirmah Buzaid. We certainly appreciate it. And uh, you guys at home, I hope you uh, appreciated this episode and enjoyed it. And you might want to get on YouTube, uh, 3w.youtube.com slash TV. And I think that report with Sheikh Yirmah Buzaid with the kids, uh, a wonderful, beautiful report, a uh, heart softener, touching report, should be uploaded there, inshallah. Uh, so you guys stay tuned uh, to next till tomorrow, uh, same time, same channel. Uh, until then, we leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.